Hey, good morning. It's so good to see you guys this morning. Uh, I think it's just an incredible time to communicate. You know, I'm sitting here, it's April 1st, uh, 2020, uh, in the midst of the coronavirus that's spreading globally. Uh, and you know, one of those big things that for me, I just really wanted to focus on, I just really began to ask God, God, what are you saying uh, to the body of Christ right now here in this hour? Uh, we just really felt like that it's time to begin to release some content that will help people in their process. I know everyone's processing this differently. I know some, some people are out of jobs. I know some people are worried about losing their jobs. I know some people are small business owners or churches that in the midst of the climate of what's going on right now, uh, that you have to close. You have to close your doors and begin to operate differently. I feel like for us, this is a pivotal time and there's, it's a time to shift. But I know in the process that there are some things in the word of God that we actually need to get a hold of as believers that will begin to help take us into this next season. Uh, and I really want to focus on one of those right now. And that's, that's beginning to pray for those in authority. You know, it was really interesting. Just the other night, I was listening to the president's press debrief uh, with his task force it's amazing the level of pressure. You could just feel it even through the TV, the, the level of pressure uh, that our president is under right now. And I don't know about you, but I don't know if I'd want to be the one leading this country right now uh, in the midst of this crisis. I think it's pretty easy to sit back and criticize, but I don't know how many people would want to step up and actually lead through something like this. I think back to some of the great leaders that have come really even over the last hundred years or so, leading through World War I, World War II, some incredible national leaders. But I just want to point us to the Word of God. What does is, what is the Word of God say in terms of praying for our leaders? And in 1 Timothy 2, uh, in verses 1 and 2, it says this, First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. And I think for us, the instruction from Paul to Timothy of the day was, pray for kings. Pray for everyone, for sure, but pray for kings and pray for those in authority so that you may lead a tranquil and quiet life. And I love that. And I think for us as believers, if we're actually willing to get a hold of this, that I'm going to commit to pray for those in authority. This is a commitment to pray for our president, a commitment to pray for our governors, our mayors of, of your city, wherever you are, wherever you're sitting today, wherever God's placed you, that you would actually have a commitment in your heart to pray for those in authority. And I love this. I love how Daniel says this in Daniel 2.21. And he actually says that God changes the times and the seasons and he removes kings and establishes them. I love that thought process because I think when we look back at history, we may say some people, wow, they were godly leaders. I think even when we read throughout the word, right? We'd say some leaders were godly leaders and other ones you'd say, hey, maybe not so much. But I think in today's day and age, knowing and trusting in our God, right? This isn't who you voted for. This wasn't what political party you're a part of, but that God removes kings and establishes them. So in our day and age, sitting here in America, we have a president, we have governors, we have those in authority over us that are the kings of today, that we are actually called as believers to press in and pray for them. And I just want to encourage you that even if you didn't vote for a particular individual, you might not agree with everything they've done or everything that's going on, but I think in the midst of this, I always challenge people who say, well, I didn't vote for this president. I didn't vote for that governor. I didn't vote for this, this person or those policies. But in the midst of it, I think you should actually pray more. If you personally disagree, you should pray even more that God would intervene. So we're praying for godly counsel, that God would surround these men and women who are leading our nation right now, that with godly counsel, we need some godly counsel, some wisdom from heaven to be released to combat what's going on in society. And really on a global pandemic of this level, I think it's for us, our responsibility as believers is to pray. So I just wanna encourage you here this morning that you would commit to pray for our president. Right now, President Trump, I can't even imagine being in the amount of meetings, going through the amount of information, processing, 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 and trying to come up with the best solution for every individual. Right, it isn't isn't just a choice few. This is it impacts the entire nation. 
So I think for us, as we kind of conclude our time here, I just want you, and I just really want to challenge you. Would you be willing to make a commitment to pray for your president, to pray for your governor, to pray for your mayor, that they would make godly decisions in this hour? Love you guys. We'll see you again soon.